Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about um, amniote skull conditions. So what I mean by amniote skull conditions is the presence or absence of one or two holes or no holes behind the orbit of um, an amniote, an egg laying uh, uh, vertebrate. Well, you'll learn more about what amniote means in lecture. Let's go with that. I'm not going to explain it at the beginning of this video. Um, so to start out with, we're going to go with um, an anapsid. So anapsid means without an arch. Um, and what that refers to is a bony arch that forms around um, a fenestra, like it's like a, a window in the side of the skull that you don't see in this one except for here, but we'll talk about those in a second. Um, so the only living uh, anapsids we really have today are turtles. Um, now what I mean by that is that they have the anapsid skull condition, it doesn't really reflect um, uh, phylogenetic uh, relationships. Okay, it has been used in the past to do that, but well, it doesn't really hold true um, super clearly yeah, when we go back in the fossil record or with even like modern molecular techniques. Um, but anyway, um, turtles have the anapsid condition, so there's no holes behind the orbit here, but there are these big holes back here. These are actually a separate type of fenestra compared to what we usually discuss when we discuss um, amniote skull conditions. So those are expanded in the snapping turtle form muscle attachment just like you see in um, the ones we're going to talk about, but the, it's a different hole <laughs> uh, compared to most amniotes. So there you go, turtle um, anapsid condition. Now next we have this lizard. So this has the diapsid condition. Now diapsid means two arches. So we've got one arch right here that is around the supratemporal fenestra. And then there's actually um, an arch that's essentially missing. So let me get this back in focus here. So this is, um, the bone that's missing here is the quadratajugal. If you remember that from the uh, uh, alligator video, that should be pretty clear because we've got the quadrate and the jugal right there. But yeah, uh, so the, we, we're missing that quadratajugal. There's not a bar forming there or an arch, but we also have the um, the hole is essentially there, is the lateral temporal fenestra. Um, so again, supratemporal fenestra, lateral temporal fenestra, or upper temporal fenestra, and lower temporal fenestra. And fenestra just means window. All right, we'll move on to another skull. So I mentioned the alligator before. Um, I want you to take a second and guess uh, what, skull con what amniote skull condition this alligator has. So I'll give you a little bit of time here, or you can pause the video. Okay, so let's cover it. Um, this is the supratemporal fenestra right here. There's a hole right there for muscle attachment. And here's the lateral temporal fenestra right there um, for muscle expansion. So that means this is a diapsid. This has the two arches, one arch here and one arch here, um, surrounding those windows behind the eye. Let's move on to a slightly different kind of animal. You may recognize this. This is a mammal. This is in fact a fox, just like the ones a lot of you have in your bone boxes. Um, I don't have a cat with me, but they have a very similar skull condition. In fact, the exact same. Um, so this is a synapsid. Synapsid means together. <laughs> or joined, a joined arch. Sorry, I now have a cat right there. Um, <laughs> There you go. Um, so, these both have the same skull condition. They're, in fact, their skulls look very similar if you just kind of take away the nose. Cool. Okay. Um, so, synapsid again means uh, together fused um, arch. Uh, so, the orbit is here, and then our lateral temporal fenestra is like this. It goes all the way through and up onto the skull for the attachment of the, of the temporalis muscle, which we'll get to in the muscle unit. Um, the only living synapsids are mammals, um, and I want to say the only extinct synapsids are stem mammals, but that might not entirely be true. Um, there's actually some people who are working on that that have found some different results, but there used to be a nice story there, uh, now there's not. <laughs> this work is ongoing. Now, <laughs> they're really screwing with our, our nice narrative. 
Um, okay, so I have another synapse here. This one actually might be a little clearer to see. Um, we've got the orbit separated by this post-orbital bar. And then there is the lateral temporal fenestra right here for the attachment of the temporalis muscle um, up. It goes probably right to about here where there's this nice ridge on the um, parietal. Okay, and then I got one last skull to show you. This one. This is a really cool one. So this is a, uh, well, you, if I do this, you saw it in the beginning. This is a porpoise or dolphin. I'm, I think it's just a porpoise. Um, I'm not sure that there's really much of a difference. It's delphinid, we'll say that. Um, so you can look behind the orbit is right here. I know it's kind of weird. Um, and then this is the lateral temporal fenestra right here. I'm putting my finger through and you can see like the zygomatic process of the temporal and the jugo is right here. So that, those are the amniote skull conditions um, that I can show you. Now there's one last one. Actually, I'll just leave this here for a second. Um, so there's the uriapsid condition that I can't show you. So I mentioned that the synapsids have the lateral temporal fenestra, but the uriapsids also have a single hole like synapsids, um, but they only have the supra temporal fenestra like you see in this alligator. So they only have this one and not this one in uriapsids. All right, um, if you have any questions or anything along those lines, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, have a good day, take care.